Right now, I'm going to give you some great Photoshop tips on how you can change the color of an image or how you can change the color of part of an image. Let's get started. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today I'm going to show you some great tips on how to change the color of a photo or partially. So why don't we get started with this one first and what I'm going to do is I want to make this kind of blend into a bluish tone and I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a quick selection here with the quick selection tool and what I did there is I'm just trying to kind of isolate the dress. So I'm just going to hit the Alt or the Option key and just clean up that selection. Great, we're close enough there. So what we want to do is just inverse that selection. So we're going to choose Command, Shift, I, and that will inverse the selection. So now we're just selecting that dress. So what we want to do now is apply a hue saturation adjustment layer. So go down to the adjustment layer and choose hue saturation. Now this will create a hue saturation adjustment over our object. Now I could just change the color by dragging it this way. And we've got that nice blue color right there. Okay, so I want to kind of blend this, but I can't use the layer mask because I already created a layer mask there and that would overwrite the mask. So what I can do is right click and then we're going to group this. So if we choose to group from layers, it'll put it inside a layer group and now we can apply a mask to that layer group. So let's click on the layer mask and now we've got a new mask. Hit the D key to reset the foreground and background colors and choose the gradient tool. Now under the gradient tool you want to choose foreground to background. Now under basics this is where it lives and it, it's like this when you first load up Photoshop 2020 but if you're using an earlier version then this will be at the top so I like to just drag that to the top there so I don't have to open this and my essential ones are there and this is foreground to background. Linear mode is normal 100% opacity great so now we just want to click and drag and this will blend this in see that's why I didn't bother making any masks around here because we've got this nice blend there and we're not using that now if you want it more gradual just click and drag like that and you get more of a gradual kind of a blend which I think is kind of nice as well now if we wanted to go this way we could create another layer group if we wanted or we could just use the foreground to transparent option under here and with that option we can drag like this and now we can put a little bit of blue across the bottom there so we've got this nice color what about something here where we've got this bright yellow background and what if we don't want that background to be yellow what if we want to make it a different color, like maybe a green or something? Well, we can do this without making any selections at all. Watch this. So we're going to go back down to our adjustment layers. And once again, we're going to grab our hue saturation adjustment layer. Now this time, what we're going to do is we're going to put it into sample mode. And the way to do that is to grab this little finger and then just move over the yellow, click once. And what that's done now, if you look here, it's created a sample of that yellow area. So that means it's going to isolate it to there. So if I move the hue now, see I can choose it to a nice red, orange, green, blue, you know, whatever I really want. So we could take it to that green there. And it's as simple as that, no selections. All right, what if we just want to change the color of her coat in this picture, but we don't want to change the color of anything else? Well, we don't need to make selections. All we need to do is just go down here under our adjustment layer and then we're going to grab our hue saturation adjustment layer. Now this is going to pop open. We're going to grab our color selection tool. And then we're just going to click on her coat to select the color. Notice that we see our color selection is selected. So this means just these colors here, the reds, we could slide this across and we could choose any colors we wanted. But now that I've moved it, let me just kind of click to make sure that I reselect it right there. Great. Now all we need to do is adjust the color here and notice that we're just adjusting that. Now let's make it pink. 
You might notice though her lips are also being affected and this is good because this gives me a chance to demonstrate a little bit more. So what you want to do too is see how it's not quite getting it in here. You can adjust it so you can expand where you want this to go. I'm actually going to grab the middle bit. See what we're doing is actually expanding that out and let's look the other way. Notice how we can just select more of the picture. Now notice we've got some little bits over here. They probably don't matter, but her lips definitely do. And also the color reflecting onto his face is not great. So what we're going to do is select the mask, grab a brush, hit the X key. So we're working with a black brush. And I'm just going to just hit the left bracket key to make it smaller. And we can just paint those areas. See where it went a little bit too crazy. And we can just paint those back in. And if you want to paint those out, you can just go over here. And essentially all we're doing is just painting there with black. And then we can fix those areas that got kind of selected as well. And that can happen a lot with skin tones if you're working with red, because there's obviously red in the skin tones as well. And just for good measure, let me show you a good brute force way of changing the color of something. So what we're going to do is select this car so we can just use the select color range and just click here and I'm going to hit the plus and we're just going to select those tones. I'm just kind of dragging that through there, play around with the fuzziness and we just want to pick up the color there of that paintwork. It's looking pretty good. Click OK. So what I'm going to do now is just create a new layer. And now with the selection active, wherever I paint is just going to go inside there. So if I was to choose a different color, like, a, I don't know, more of a blue and paint, notice how it protects it in there. So it's just going over those areas that have been selected. Now there's a couple of little bits where it went over that I probably will have to fix manually. Now when I'm painting it, notice this is not looking too good right now, is it? What I need to do is just change the mode to color. And let's hit Control D to deselect it. And then I can just go over with my brush now and just paint over these little extra areas that I wanted to get that got missed. So I just use that rough selection just to kind of help me get started and save a little bit of time. Now, if you didn't want it to go over there, you could easily enough just hit the E key for the eraser. This is one of the few times I would say to use the eraser tool. And I think you get the general idea. Now, if you want to change the color of this, we can just select it, hit Control U or Command U for hue saturation. And now we can adjust the colors and we can pretty much make it any color we want. Now, if you want to pick that up, you just we're going to grab that color there, grab the brush, and we can see there's a few little bits there that we need to touch up there. All right, what about this nice 50s style image? What if we want to apply a color effect to it? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the gradients panel. So go under window and choose gradients. Now let's open the gradients. And if we hold down the control or command key and click this little disclosure triangle, it will open all of them. So we could find a tone we like, and all we need to do is just drag and drop, and that will drop on top of the photo. Change it to color blend mode. And now just reduce the opacity. And there's our cool color effect before and after. Now, if you want to apply the color effect to the photo, rather than kind of having this gradient over the top, we can use a gradient map. So with that layer selected, go down into the adjustment layers. And now we're going to choose the gradient map. Go to the properties, click, and you'll see all the color swatches. Once again, hold down control key and that will pop them all open. If you don't, you have to open them one at a time. So let's do them all at once. And why don't we grab the same color? This time, what we're going to do is go back to our color blend mode once again and drop the opacity down. So what it's doing this time is it's more evenly distributing these tones. So the, 
The shadow area is going to get more of the yellow color, whereas the lighter area is going to get the red. I actually want it the other way around. So click reverse. And we can see those brighter tones now are getting that more yellow color, that, which looks better in the brights. And then the reds here is giving a nice rich look. So we've got that look there. So this was with the gradient. And this is with the gradient map. Well, here's the thing. We can combine them both if we want and get another type of effect. Let me show you one more. So if we go here and then we decide to just use our typical gradient, but this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it as an adjustment layer. And so I'm just going to grab a gradient adjustment layer. I want to use the rainbow colored gradient, but notice it's not there anymore. So what we need to do is go up under the gradients panel. And then under the gradients panel, we're going to click here and then we're going to choose to legacy gradients. And that will add them down there. And at the same time, it will also add them here. So let's click on our gradient here and let's go down to our legacy default gradients. And there's our rainbow gradient. Now what I want to do is I'm going to change the angle of it and I'm going to make it bigger. So we're actually just going to blend certain colors in here. Click OK. Now we're going to go under our color blend mode once again. But here's the thing. I don't necessarily want that color. So check this out. If we double click on our gradient fill, just move it to the side out of the way. Watch this. We can drag on the document and notice we're actually dragging through our gradient so we can find the gradient that we want to work with. And of course, we can change that scale down a little bit if it's too big. See what we can do there. Maybe we want to do that. Now we can play around with the opacity, blend that in a little bit. And there we go. We can create a different type of effect. All right, so I hope you found these tips useful. Let me know in the comments underneath which was your favorite one. And by the way, I just recently was on YouTube and I was watching some channels that I thought I had subscribed to, been watching them forever, and I hadn't. So if you've been watching for a while and you haven't yet subscribed, just check there. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you're new to Photoshop Cafe, also consider subscribing and becoming part of the Cafe crew. You'll get a new tutorial from me every single week. Ring that notification bell so you know when I upload. And by the way, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. Tell all your friends about Photoshop Cafe, and until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.